Iums. I mean, in your monitors. They're exactly as they sound. They go in your ears. So you got big open backs that make it, you know, feel like you're in a big room. Well, these are literally the absolute opposite. One of their usefulness is the fact that they are basically earplugs. So it's really nice being able to cut out noise and just have the music delivered straight into your greasy ear holes. I lived out of a Sennheiser set of in-ear monitors, like all through high school and stuff with my iPod, because you, know, you basically just find a quiet room wherever you are. I worked as a professional drummer and that's all I did through school. And so basically having earplugs in my pocket at all times just oh, so good. So I got a selection of them and I know like there's so many different types here. People go, oh, you didn't check out these or these like these are the ones I got. And yes, I baited you in the thumbnail. I do have a $2,000 pair of any monitors here to show you. But we're going to start at the cheapest, mate. And it's these very ones at $18. Deuce. That's Aussie dollars. Samsung tuned by AKG Buds. I mean, I think these come with most Samsung Galaxy whatevers. Sort of like a cloth cable but cheap for some reason my pair arrived all scratched up on one side and speaking of scratched up i'm sorry if my hands look filthy that's all industrial glue and look at that i pinched my hands in a pair of pliers like that <laughs> don't you love it when that happens i'm acoustic treating my warehouse room and so like not hand friendly activities i'm sorry but sound by akg i love akg first professional set of studio headphones I ever used were k240s first audiophile investment set of headphones i got were k K712s. And hey, these sound like crap. They really do. They're really muffly and woofy. The top end's all crushed together. They have no sound stage. Any set of headphones could do left and right. But then like better headphones could start doing in front and behind you. These just do left and right. But hey, it's got a microphone and I get to yell into it. So all this one time, I'm eating some biscuits and all mate runs in and goes, don't eat those mate, they're dog biscuits. And I'm like freaking out because I thought they were made out of dogs. So I'm, I'm, I'm crying at this point. I'm going, is this Labrador flavored? And he's like, nah, mate, they're for dogs. They're not for you. And then I'm like, oh, that's all right. And I kept eating them. Hey, that's a pretty good mic. I don't hate that at all. I mean, I hate the rest of it, like um, this cable. And this is such a noisy cable. And you know, what do I mean by noisy cable? Like static or something? No, no, I have a beard, right? And when wearing these, this cable rests on my face. Guess what also rests on my face? My beard. So what happens is this rubs against it and you literally get like a like you hear everything that these rub up against. Could be your jacket, it could be the straps on your backpack. It sucks. Like heaps of you guys might be living with a noisy cable thinking it's normal. It's not. It's cheap and garbage. As soon as a cable does that, for me it's disqualification. What's the point of having earplugs if all it does is amplify the sound of your jacket rubbing on your headphone cable? So 18 bucks? Nah, out of here. Yeah, you know. AKG's dead, guys. All their engineers are gone. They're all Austrian audio now. So yeah, Samsung just uses the AKG brand to slap on stuff to make it seem like it's high rent. Like the Samsung beans. And would you know, they're not good either. Hmm. Oh, poor AKG. So going up in price now, fellas, we're up to 35 Aussie dollary dues. And I've already shown these in another video, but mate, I gotta shout out them about them again. It's the KZ ZSN Pro X's. Yes, I say Z, just deal with it. These fit great. Yeah, the Samsungs didn't, by the way. That's actually metal. Oh, I love the clear plastic. They're not hiding anything. Ooh, removable cable. You can only do that with those AKGs with a pair of scissors. They've got a little bit extra base and a little bit extra top end, but I think it's tastefully done. With like walking around headphones like these, those are the sounds that get soaked up by like bus engine noises, airplanes, whatever. So a little bit extra of that. I mean, that makes sense. And hey, this cable, not noisy at all. Rubs up all over my greasy beard and there's no problems. Oh, and mate, look, it's got a mic. So it's one time we're driving off to the shops because like we're all out of dog biscuits. And then like we're three calls away there and we realize that like our dog died three years ago. And then it's kind of like dawn on me that I, like those dog biscuits were, were three years old. They were still pretty good. Not as good as the Samsungs. But then it's got the way better sounding earbuds, which are like user replaceable cables so you can get balanced outputs if you want. Actually have some sound staging where there's a little bit of forwards and back. And has a cable that doesn't amplify whatever it's rubbing up against. Now we're jumping up a bit, right? You know, my early Sennheiser days. I'm a fan of Sennheiser, right? So these are 120 Aussie bucks. But I mean, you do get this hard case. I really like it. So these are the Sennheiser Momentum 
in is. Uh, they are not that comfortable. <laughs> They, they just aren't. It's like a bullet. It's like you're loading your ears. Not bad sound. Not bad. Not anything amazing. I still think like the, the cheap KZs are way better. It's got a mic. So like this one time we're looking for a new dog, but then like Uncle Kevo hasn't had a job in a while and he was kind of like, yo, how about I be your dog and you can hire me? And it's like, well, you know, he can sleep on the veranda. He gets to eat dog biscuits. They're not bad. And you know, it's better than the current situation he's at where he's literally like sleeping under a kindergarten. I, like it's it's not even above ground, mate, but he's figured out a way to get under there. Good mic, better than the KZs. I think it's probably the best mic to be honest. And then just bang, disqualification. Why is that? Well, mate, of course, it's got the noisiest cable out of all of them. Anything that touches this cable is amplified straight into your ear hole. So yeah, the sound is all right. The microphone's actually quite good. They're not particularly comfortable, and then all you hear is your beard. Wow, isn't that weird? The two biggest companies so far have made headphones that are literally unwearable. Like, this is unbearable. I don't, I'd never want to wear these. For the money of those Sennheisers, you could get four pairs of these. Like, ugh. All right, now we're getting into the real keen territory, all right? So these ones come in at 460 bucks. <laughs> Very kind of Fio to send me these. I'm trying to buy everything for reviews now. I really do just prefer doing that. It's a lot easier because usually, you know, companies want me to sign something and they pester me. Oh, when's your video coming out? And it really annoys me. Fio just sent them to me anyway. They're like, ah. So they're always super cool. The FD5s. And look at these. Against my shattered warehouse hands, these look like jewelry. Polished stainless steel like they are satisfyingly heavy these fit great my left ear is a different shape to my right it's normal I swear stop bullying me these fit beautiful and they just look epic of course fully removable cable as you'd expect but when you're getting into this price range it's usually the accessories that come with it that really make these a bit of value I suppose so inside the box well I don't get worked up about presentation anymore you know Beats by Dre and the Raycons kind of killed that for me <laughs> like what does a nice unboxing mean if the product's no good but I mean oh snacks <laughs> well I mean the, the presentation is beautiful like this cut foam and like this wallet it's not what I'd call a portable case but I would still call it a very very nice one and under here I mean it's like a factory it's like a full-blown workshop in here for however you want to wear them I mean working as a drummer I love these earplug tips they are so good you do take a knock in the sound naturally it's so good being able to be on like a full-blown loud stage and you just get that monitor dial just in that's super good. And there's memory foam ones. There's so many kinds. But the, the cleverest trick here, the more hardcore audio equipment has balanced output, where the signal sent down both cables instead of just one, and it gets rid of noise through phasing. You know, And so you can get the little tiny 2.4 and also the big 4.4. You know, a lot of time you'd have to swap cables. But what Theo have done is you just change the tip. You've got a nostril brush, just stick that in your nose and twiddle it. Feels great, don't do it. Extra tubes, I guess, you know, because they can get clogged up over time. Yes, earplugs are gross. Uh, so they give you spares, excellent. But then the 4.4 and 2.5 balanced connectors, which will turn this into a balanced cable. Like, that's so cool. You don't need a new cable, just change the tip. Like, they've given you everything to plug these into whatever the heck you got, basically. Put the snacks back for later. Well, for that amount of cash though, they better sound good. And uh, uh, yeah, they do. The KZs are conventionally good. Like, they, they sound great, but this is a noticeable step up. I mean, with any monitors, it's hard to get soundstage, that nice big wider feel. These are far wider than these. They're far more balanced. They've still got like a little bit of extra top end. People tend to like that kind of sound with any monitors, because you know, that kind of intense thing. But what I realized is, is the bass is way smoother with like really big stinky like dance hall music or whatever. The KZs do a really good job of giving a nice top and bottom end. And then these guys fill in all the details in between. It's a noticeable bump up. No microphone to yell into that. So these next ones weren't really meant for this video, actually. I bought these purely for me. I haven't really done any traveling at all. I'm a country boy here in SA, you know, moved to the city for a jazz degree. But when I go traveling, I'd love to bring a nice set of headphones with me. Now, my favorites are the Audacy LCD 2s. The only problem is you need like a support truck along with these to use them. You know, big crazy cables. You need an amp and a DAC with these. The case for these is huge, like and they're strangely fragile. 
Like, hey, yeah, I, I don't want to be dragging these around the world. So the cool thing about them is they're not like standard speakers. A standard speaker looks like this. It's called a dynamic driver. It's just a single piece of plastic that makes all the noise. There's a magnet on the back. You know, classic speaker that we're used to. The LCD2s are a planar magnetic. It's literally like a membrane with traces on it. No magnet hanging off it. The magnets are around it. And it just goes, it's so crispy clean and the bass is heaps like, oh, I'd love a super portable version of that. Well, hold on to your butts. Orders that you've done it. These have been out for a few years, but planar magnetic in ears. And yes, they are full blown open backs. These are not earplugs at all. When you put them in, you don't hear the world go. It's just, yeah, you're just sticking like an open tube in your ear. And you can see, look how big the outside of it is. It's just like these. It actually has plan planar magnetic technology in it. So they're called the iSign 10. It's a smiling man. It's a certificate of authenticity because these were over 500 Aussie bucks. I'm telling you, like, these were not cheap. And you got dingus bits and a 128 megabyte flash drive with the instruction manuals on it. That's a little bit like, it's a bit wasteful for plastic considering most people never even read instructions. If you look at the back, man, you see there's a lot going on in there. Look, it's even got a diagram of this. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, look, here they are. Right out the gate, they feel nasty. They are so cheap feeling. And this sprungy spaghetti cable that's got like a memory to it. See, like, it fights me. It wants to be a shape. These have really big overhang, right? So these clips are really important to hang on your ears so they actually stay on your head. But, oh. Ooh, this plastic housing is just yuck. Yes, you can swap the cables out. That's, I mean, you'd expect that at this price range. The cable is just like the cheap, nasty Sennheisers. I mean, they're not noisy, but they're not nice. But hey, it's all about the sound. Maybe these are all the concessions they had to make to put this technology in something so portable that I literally could stuff in my pocket and have just planar magnetics just whoop whenever I want. I hate how they sound. Yeah, sure, they've got great bass extension. That doesn't mean they have heaps of bass. It means like, you know, cheap headphones can't play the crazy low sub bass. The stuff that you don't even hear, you feel it. These can do some of that, but the top end is rubbish. My audio engineer friend put these on and went, oh, the top end's not very good, huh? I don't find them comfortable. I don't like the cable and I just don't like the sound. And that means I especially hate the price. Odyssey, I'm a huge fan, but Oh, not with these. So we're up to the last lads and the ones I baited you in here with because they are 2,000 Aussie dollar -y dues if I wanted to buy them. Meze, the makers of the classic 99s and the cheaper Neos, which have the same guts but without the mahogany housings. I love them when I tried them. They're awesome. Uh, they were like, would you like to try some $2,000 in-ear monitors? I'm like, you're insane for sending them to me. But sure, <laughs> the madmen did it. <laughs> Oh, they even gave me the big stinky 4.4 balance cable. Oh, big boy. So they look like headphones that if you bought a new Maserati, these would be waiting in the glove box for you. That's how they look to me. They are understated yet really classy looking. I love that logo of theirs. And these are vented on the back. So they're like semi open backs, funny enough. Look at the milling on that. Uh, Meze just make really nice cases. <laughs> it's, this is my favorite case out of all of them. And, you know, so I've got the regular three and a half mil cable. You know, that's that's the one they ship with it. Uh, and then you've got the the big dingus, and then the airplane double dingus. That's nice. Romanian, by the way. And I, I love saying that because all the Romanians who watch go yeah. <laughs> not as many as Fio, but enough bud bits. I mean, they don't have those earplug tips, but it's not really what these are about, I suppose. Um, I love these ones here, they're like open cannons, but they didn't fit as good. Those ones did. And that's it, really. That's, that's all it comes with. So the left one's a little bit hard to fit in my ear. It's not a fault of these. It's my stupid head. I'm very aware of that. But these are the most balanced out of all of them. It doesn't have that really intense high end that maybe a lot of IEM drivers kind of like. It's something that they do that could be really intense, and that's fun for some genres of music. But soundstage. <laughs> like... Again, these are semi-open, so they bleed a little bit, not heaps, so they're not really meant to be full-blown earplugs. But these are the widest out of all of them. Like, percussive sounds, like applause and stuff. Like, it's 
crispy and sharp. So yes, these are very expensive. Although funny enough, this is nowhere near the top end. I mean, you could spend five or 6,000 bucks on a set of IEMs. So this is like the beginning of the top shelf. And you know, it's all diminishing returns. The higher up you go, the harder it is to make improvements. Like, a lot of pop music sounds great out of nearly anything, even those crappy AKG Samsungs. Like Earth, Wind & Fire September with the bongo man in the right ear that you can't ignore now. You can't ignore the bongo man. But live albums, it what brings out the good and bad headphones to me, like acoustic instruments, the sound of synths bouncing off the walls and the stage, along with the audience participation. You, that's where you get that huge 3D vibe. You can hear in front of you and behind you, so much detail. My go-to test for this is George Benson's Affirmation, the live version, because the intro, like there's so much going on. Those Samsung AKGs just do left and right, but you put on a good set of cans and this is all around you. The mastered version on Tidal, and yes, there is a bump over Spotify. These just have that extra boof, and I found myself using these the most. You know, where I'll just let Tidal pick a whole bunch of songs and only half of them load because of barely functioning apps. So funny enough, these might take the place of the Orders the Eye signs that I bought, where I wanted a nice wide soundstage that I could just chuck in my pocket or maybe in that little case and put it into a bag as I travel. So heck, there you go. So I. Uh, Cheers, Meze! You did it! <laughs> ah, but there are a couple of little gadgets I want to show you. Last time I took a quick look at some IEMs, people mentioned that, like, I didn't say that you can get things that turn these into wireless. I mean, this is like a cheap eBay one, so it's pretty nasty, to be honest. Plug your head behindies into this, and now you have beautiful stainless steel headphones connected to eBay nonsense. But there's something better than this. <laughs> so when Theo sent me these, like, Thanks guys, you didn't have to. <laughs> the cheeky monkey's also included. The UTW 53. Catchy name I know. It's this box, metal lid, plastic everything else though. USB-C, good, but inside, Oh, are you catching on? And now you got true wireless audiophile in-ears. Because these just aren't like Bluetooth dongle whatevers, they're also headphone amplifiers. This might be a big chunky case, but it's designed so you can just stick in whatever earbuds you have hanging off of them. And if it looks like these only work with Fios, no, these work with Shures. Oh, heck, they work with the Mezes. <laughs> There you go, that's fun. <laughs> I could literally listen to one Meze and one Fio if I wanted to. Ugh. About a hundred US bucks. I mean, this it's just so cool that these things exist where like there are some things that cables do better than Bluetooth, like latency. And that's why it's been the focus of this video because yeah, sometimes you just need a hardwired connection to get the best. But then these same companies are also making really cool gadgets to make things wireless as well. So super quick recap, AKG Samsungs. Trash. Nice mic, trash cable, trash sound. And I'm sorry if I offend any of you who use these and like them, but if anything, get excited because music gets so much better than this. For instance, you know, a little bit extra and this is a humongous jump. Humongous. I keep rating these because they keep being good. So, boing. Sennheisers, disqualified, terrible cable, not that grave a fit, nice mic. You know, and again, like the Samsung, AKG, and Sennheiser ones, you can't pull out the cable. You can't even fix the biggest issue with them. How much does it cost to just have two cables you can go like, like that? You know, KZ's doing it for a quarter of the price with better sound. So, hmm, big companies sure like to make junk. The Fio FD5s, uh, I really like these. You know, for pop music, I actually found these a little bit more fun to listen to. And the fact that they are earplugs as well, like that's just super useful. It's one of my favorite things about these. You know, if I want a big open sound, I'll wear big open ears. Yeah, really nice and well supported. Lots of spare parts, heaps of bits and whatever's and that interchangeable cable. It's not, I mean, you know, it's 400 and something bucks, but you get everything in there and you know, stainless steel. Anyone who knows what stainless steel is all about knows that these gonna look good for a long time. All oh, these eye signs. They're cheap and nasty feeling and just don't sound that good. That's all I have to say. Uh, and the Meze Ray Pentas, uh, the best sounding ones of the day, funny enough. <laughs> I mean, you kind of hope that the $2,000 pair would be the best ones. It's all diminishing returns in it. Again, nice wide soundstage out of something this small, like, and they're beautifully built. 
Not as many accessories as the Fio, but I love that you can get a big stink cable just right out. <laughs> I genuinely enjoyed wearing these. I haven't used in earbuds for like quite a while now. You know, I tend to do all my listening at home nowadays, but I'm I'm super stoked to have these. And uh, you know, and that quick mention of um, Fio's like headphone wireless maker. Uh, I don't word very well. They can bounce around a little bit on the top of my ears, but that's okay. And actually, they have a microphone there in there. So like Uncle Kevo's our dog now, and it like super sucks because all he does is rob the house and he poos on the carpet and he dug up the back lawn. Don't even know how he did it, mate. Well, actually, I mean, he borrowed the excavator from Bunnings, mate, because, like, you know, he, he took all of our things and sold the money to rent the Bunnings excavator. But, no, nah, it's going all right. I mean, hey, we all get dog biscuits now. The microphone's pretty average, huh? I mean, they're not that expensive, and they basically turn your already awesome IEMs into nice wireless ones with an app. Go Fio. Just, yeah, if it was my money, I probably would get the Fios. I mean, they're literally a quarter of the price, and they still do a fantastic job. But that said, owning both of these, I would grab these. <laughs> Portable, nice, wide headphones. So, nice. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I do extra videos, and I've been putting this warehouse together. It's why my hands look awful. I'll give you a quick tour of the Nugget Realm. I mean, there are things in here I'm not going to make vids out of for a really long time, and so, hey, you get a little bit of a sneak peek of what could be future vids in a few years' time. There's some weird stuff in here. So, thanks so much for watching, and mate. I'll see you all next time. What's so good about this rock? Man, there's something about this rock that she knows that I don't know. Look at that face. Licking the rock. Well, simple pleasures. Give me a lick.